Welcome to another inspiring message from Victory Church. We believe that God is at work right now to bring victory to your life. For more information about Victory Church, find us online at www.victorychurchnwa.com. right now. There it is. That's the fire right there. That's the anointing. On you too. Hallelujah. I know you didn't come here expecting this today, but if you just lift your hands, I speak to her nerves in Jesus' name. Devil, I break your hold off of her right now. Mama, be free. Strength. Strengthen those limbs. Lift your hands. Just lift them. Just lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Hallelujah. A few months ago, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even feel my legs. But I'm walking now. The same power that's in me that's working through Christ is in you right now. If you'll stretch your faith, if you'll step up and move in it. Fire on you right now. Brother Marlon, I want you to come here. I want you to lay your hands on the back of Pastor, Papa, your dad. Your spiritual dad, I want you to lay hands on his back. Just lay hands on his back. Just touch his back. And when you do, it's going to hit both of you at the same time. I command infection. I command anything that is coming against pastor right now to be broken. I command his mind to be able to be more clear right now. Abundance, blessing, prosperity. Mom. I speak rest, rest on you, rest, not just because you're tired, but God said rest in the midst of this new season that is happening upon this place, upon you, God said if you stretch out, you're going to see things that neither one of you have ever seen before in your life, probably what I've never seen before in my life, I, I'm looking forward to what is getting ready to explode. Hallelujah. God, I love them. I love them so much. Let their latter days be greater than anything they've ever seen. Compounded upon compounded upon compounded. I speak the anointing of God to be like it's never been on Him. Never been upon her. You'll be releasing anointing like you've never released before in the past. Huh. For this generation. Don't go back. I hear God saying, don't hesitate. Don't step back. Son, you've experienced. That's what I'm hearing him saying. Son, uh, You've seen me, you've known me, and those things that just spoke to you in the middle of the night, he said, I'm giving it to you, and even more than what you can even think. In the name of Jesus. Everybody close your eyes and lift your hands right now. Come on, just begin to close your eyes, lift your hands and worship him right now out of your mouth. The anointing wave is moving right now in this place. Power, 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 power. power. 
power. Come on, if you need, if you want that fresh touch, if you want that fresh touch, come on, just, just lift your hands. somebody know that you love them today and welcome them to the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Awesome God. Awesome God.
Praise God. When the GPS gets you back to your seat, you can sit down. Praise God. We have a lot of things that are that will be happening at Victory uh, this fall. One of the things that we plan on doing is we are going to uh, increase, I guess is a good way of putting it. It's not reinstitute because we've not stopped it. But we are going to increase our our home group meetings and we're going to make them a little bit more uh, classified, if you please, from the standpoint of the meetings will be by age groups too, especially when it comes to our younger ages from the standpoint of teens, college age, young marrieds, young singles, that kind of thing. We're going to be adding to our, our groups and be doing some things that way. If the Holy Spirit speaks to you about being a part of one of these groups or helping us to head up a group like this, whether it's in Spanish or English or some other language, makes no difference to us. Uh, we want to reach everyone that we possibly can. The awesome thing is our church van is back in operation again. Got it all fixed. So it's ready to go. And uh, if if we need to be picking up groups to bring them either here to the church, you say our home's too small to do a group like that. Well, do it here at the church. That's what the church is for. And we can uh, help out by helping to pick up people and what have you. We've got some, some men who have said that they will drive the van and pick up people for all of our different meetings. But we want to do everything that we possibly can to reach as many people as possible for the kingdom of God. Victory is very diverse from the standpoint of nations of the world and what have you. And we want to become more diverse when it comes to age groups to the place that we have people out of every age group at Victory Church, not just ones and twos, but by the dozens and the and the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the hundreds that away, just reaching everybody that we possibly can for the kingdom of God. And I believe God's going to help us to get that job done. How many can say amen? You say, oh, God couldn't use me. Why not? In Spanish, is it por qué no? Is that right? Did I say it right? Por qué no? God can use you. Every person in this room, God can use you. You say, I can't lead anybody. Anybody who is a week younger than you in God, you can lead them. You say, I'm too busy. If you are, you're too busy. You need to get your priorities straight so that you can, can do more for, for God. Because you see, the most important thing isn't in the natural, it's in the supernatural and in the eternal. Hemming say amen. When it's all over with, everything's completed here. For the most part, everything that you have worked for will be left here. It won't go with you. You say, I love my house. I love my car. I love my boat. love my cycle. love my this or that or the other. Well, love it as much as you possibly can because you're not taking it with you. I was talking with a man this week and he was telling me about a guy who had... Him, his whole family had been involved in illegal practices of the 40s and 50s and 60s in, in, in Oklahoma. What they were, they were called bootleggers. Well, if you don't know what a bootlegger is, what they did is they brought 
illegal whiskey into the state of Oklahoma where at that time alcohol was not allowed and they brought it in and sold it in the state. And uh, this man had made lots of money and had, was a millionaire when, it, when being a millionaire really meant something. And he told this young man one day, he said, this is what's going to happen. He said, they say I can't take it with me. I'm going to take it with me. And he said, oh, you are? You're going to take it with you? He said, yes. He said, when I die, I'm going to tell my family to fill my casket with $100 bills. And this young man said to him, he said, son, or sir, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the last one by the casket. I'm taking it all out and putting an IOU in the casket. He said, you know, it really isn't going to make any difference when I'm dead. All those things that I've amassed are nothing when I'm gone. So, doing something for God, I'll never forget. This has been, uh, oh goodness, a long time ago. There was a small church in Oklahoma City. It was right along the railroad track. And when the trains went by, the whole church shook. And they had, this little church was not real fancy by any means. And what they did is they had little plaques, uh, little picture frames with different sayings all over the walls in the church. And when the train would go through, those, those picture frames on the wall would just bounce against the wall. And there was one of those frames that inside it, it had these words. I'll never forget it. It stayed in my life from that day until now. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And that's what it is, folks. Doing something for God. Your life can be the source of change for somebody else to bring them into the kingdom of God. And so we invite you to become a part of helping us reach people in the community. We have a lot of people that are out today. I think everybody decided to leave town on the same day. And so we've got a lot of people out today. So I'll be making this announcement probably for the next several weeks. But hopefully by the 1st of October, we're going to be instituting some new groups in our church. And we'll be talking to you about those. And uh, get ready. Uh, I'm sure that we'll have that on Facebook online Tesla will help us with that to get that done and, and make sure that everyone knows everything that's happening here at Victory Church. So lots of stuff happening, a lot of things going on, but the important thing isn't about all those things. It's about you today. You today. Uh, as a pastor, I deal with something. I deal with something that probably a lot of you in this room never deal with. Maybe will never deal with in your life. And it's possibly one of the more frustrating things that I deal with in life. Are you ready for it? It's giving the word of God to people. And when they leave, they leave the notes on the seat and the word here in the room with it. With it. How do I get it to the place that when you leave the room, you go out into the streets of the city, you go to your home, that you take the message that was given, because you see, it isn't for me a job. This is a 
divine conviction from, from God Himself to give you the word of the Lord that I give you every week. I believe it's not a word from me, it's a word from heaven. I believe it's a word that if you will allow it, it will change your life. And you see, it's not about you doing what I want you to do. I am not a control freak from that standpoint. You see, it's, it's not about me saying, all right, do what I say and do what I do or else. This is what it really boils down to more than anything else. If it is a word from God... It's doing what God says. Doing what God says. And, and frankly, if you don't believe that I have a word from God and you're not coming with that kind of conviction in your heart, then why are you here? Go find a church where the word of God is being preached that you feel like that person is giving you that. I believe you're here because you believe that I do hear from God. For me, it's not a matter of doing what some guys are doing today. You know, every week in my email box, I have got somebody trying to sell me sermons. And I'm thinking, probably the guy who's writing these sermons... I've been preaching longer than he is old. I've been more involved in ministry than he has ever been. I have experienced things he's never experienced. But you see, more than that, it's not about my experience. It's about who I know and who is talking to me. And I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the God that I know that is speaking to me. And if you will listen to what, what I say in, in messages here at the church, there is always something there that will prepare you for going forward. Now, let me tell you something. One of the great temptations of the devil is to do this with you is always make you look back. Are you with me? Always make you look back. When uh, God's messengers came into the city and spoke to Lot and said, I want you to get you and your family and take them out of the city because I'm going to rain down fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah because of its bad, uh, bad ways. And when God spoke to him about that, uh, or these messengers spoke to him, this is what they said, don't look back. Don't look back. And what happened? Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. And when I look at this whole thing, I see that looking back never helps your forward progress. Now, every person in this room today will face challenges in your life. I don't care who you are. Every person is going to face challenges. Male, female, color of skin. Predominant language will not make any difference for you. Every person in this room today will face challenges in life. Now, the big thing that goes along with the challenge is what do you do with the challenge? How do you respond to the challenge? You see, a lot of people, when they have a challenge in life, what, they, what the temptation is for them is to run. 
this week, out at the ranch, there was something that happened. I had been expecting it to happen for quite some time, and it hadn't happened until this week. What, what, what happened was, as you well know, we've had all the debris, the barns that have fell down, and we've had uh, sheet metal laying on the ground. Well, here's what I know from my 70-plus years of being on the planet is snakes love to get under sheet metal because the, the warmth of the sheet metal warms them up. They're a cold-blooded animal, and the way they warm their blood up is with the sun or what have you, and getting under sheet metal will make them uh, more comfortable. They like it. So I have been waiting for someone to come out with, uh, with uh, uh, white knuckles and a flushed face because all of a sudden they picked up a piece of sheet iron and underneath it was a big snake. It hadn't happened so far. And I thought, well, evidently we don't have too many snakes around right now. And uh, Brother Jose Luis, or Hoche as we call him, he's walking toward the road. And you can tell he's pretty dark skinned. And he was nearly white. And he was carrying something on a stick. It was a snake. And he was cleaning up under uh, one of our last buildings that needed cleaning. And when he picked it up, he found a snake underneath it. And you say, well, was it a good snake or a bad snake? They're all bad, folks. I don't care what you say. You know, Sister Debbie, she gets on us all the time because she wants us to keep every black snake on the place. I think they're all her pets. They're not my pets. This big one was up by the house last year, and he, and he kept coming toward the house, and I was trying to keep him from going toward the house. And so I took a stick, and I picked him up, and I turned him around and threw him the other direction. And I thought I was doing a good thing for Miss Debbie, and that snake turned around and come straight back toward the house again. I picked him up, and I threw him again. Guess what? He came again. That time, I wasn't as nice. Yeah. You're going to face challenges in life, folks. There's going to be things that you're going to face and how you deal with it. Sometimes you want to run from the snake. No, you don't run from the snake. You face the snake. Are you with me? You learn how to face it. Well, you can't face those challenges without the resources to face the challenges that you have in your life. Now, I'm going to stop for a second, and I'm going to give you a short little deal. This, for some of you, will be old hat. For some of you, it will be new. You see, you're made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit. Let me understand when I say that. The body is what I see. When, I, when somebody says to me uh, a particular name, what happens in my mind is my mind starts going back through its uh, hard drive and it, it takes that name and it puts it with a picture in my mind of someone I've seen. So when somebody says, uh, Sister Nada to me, I know who it is. All of a sudden, brrr, yeah, there she is. That's Nada. But I only see her body this way. That's all I'm seeing right now is her body. Other than by beginning to watch her life, I begin to see just beyond a body and I see into the soul of who she is. And her soul makes up her mind, will, and emotions. And the big thing about the, if, if, if Nada came into church and she didn't have that sweet smile that she always has on her face and this little bubbly way about her, 
I would know that there was something going on in her soul. There was something happening there. But then there is another part of you. You see, the body is out here. It's what we see. It's the flesh side. But there is a, along with everything that goes on in our life, we are a body living in a flesh, but we have a battle, not just a fleshly battle. We have a spiritual battle. Everybody say amen. Weapons, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And when it talks about that, it's talking about a spirit world. So we've got the natural world and we've got the spirit world. And the middle thing for us involved in this is we're in a natural body with a mind, will, and emotion, but there is another part of you, and it's just as real as all of the rest of it, and there is a spiritual you. That spiritual you is either aligning itself with God, or it's aligning itself with the kingdom of darkness, one or the other. And so what is taking place in our life is for we've got to build up that spiritual man to the place that he's strong enough to fight against the devil. I can't fight against the devil with guns and knives and clubs or natural things. If he'd show up that way, there's some of us in the room that have enough weaponry, we could take care of him. But you see, that isn't the way he shows up. He shows up in a spiritual form in your life, and he brings tests and challenges against you, trying to get your body to give up and your mind, will, and emotion to give up to his course. So what does God do with us? He starts working in your body and then your mind, will, and emotion. He grabs, he takes hold of it and tries to impress into us the kind of qualities and thoughts and thinking that makes us our, face our challenges and win. But it goes into your soulish rim, your mind, will, and emotion. Okay? So, how does God do all this, these things? I want to I read you a scripture. It's a part of the challenge that I talked about earlier. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. I don't know how far we'll get today. Probably won't get all of this talked about. But 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 1, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that everybody, look at this word. English, it's all. In Spanish, it's todos. And uh, if you're reading the Spanish part here, you'll see todos mentioned several times. If you read it in English, you'll see the word all mentioned several times. I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now, here's the, the thought. Everybody heard the same thing. Everybody experienced the same thing. Everyone saw the same miracles. All of them did. 
All of them did. Todos. All of them experienced the same thing. Can, can I say this? If you all experience the same thing, you've all had the same education, why is it that some are successful and some aren't? It says, with, with some of them, he was not well pleased. And what happened to them? They died in the wilderness. They didn't go any further. The steps that they made at that particular time took them from Egypt into the desert, and they died in that desert. Now, Hebrews 3. Therefore, the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will, everybody say, here. Uh, Spanish, it is what? Escuchar. Okay. Here, escuchar. Today, if you will hear what? The voice of God. If you will hear his voice. When do you need to hear his voice? Today. Today if you will hear his voice. Next verse. Do not harden your hearts. As in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness. Where your fathers tested me. Tried me. Saw my works 40 years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray where? In their heart. Now I'm going to say something to you. I believe your heart is a part of your mind, will, and emotion. And what happens, our mind, will, and emotion goes astray from the voice of God. We block out the voice of God from our lives. So, so I've sworn in my wrath, this is what's not going to happen. They shall not enter my rest. Then verse 12, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of what? Unbelief. In departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. To the end. While it is said, Today, if you will what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Verse 19 says, So we see that they could not enter in because of what? How in the world? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How in the world change this for a second. Let me stop and say, if if you went down to a large sea and there was nowhere for you to go because you've got an army coming behind you, mountains on the side, and the only answer for you is to go out into water, and just as you get in the water, the waters part, and you walk across on dry ground. If you saw that, would that make a believer out of you? Would it? Now, if you get 
into a desert and there's nothing to eat but the few animals that you've taken with you out of Egypt and every day mysteriously you find this stuff laying on the ground that you can pick up and eat it and it's good and nourishing and it's called manna from heaven. If you've got that going on in your life, now, if you have experienced these miracles, if you have seen this kind of thing happen, would you believe? Would you? Don't you think? That should make a believer out of anybody? It didn't. Did you hear me? It didn't. When you go to Numbers chapter 13 and 14, you'll find how that when they, they, there came the time that they was to leave that desert place that they were in and go into the promised land, there was spies sent into the land and ten of them came back and said, we can't possess the land. And because of it, you know what happened? A generation died in the wilderness. Why? Unbelief. Unbelief. You see, what really God is trying to do with us from the time we accept Him as our personal Savior, He's putting us on this pathway of taking us into a life where we depend upon Him. Uh, no longer are you depending upon your own abilities anymore but your greatest dependency is upon God. And what happens out of this, if what, what, what God is doing, is He's developing a lifestyle of faith. A lifestyle of faith. So what do you mean a lifestyle of faith? A lifestyle of faith means that you depend on God, not on you. Are you with me? Now, when I say we depend upon God, not on ourselves, it doesn't mean that you sit down on your hands and do nothing. I'm not talking about that. But what you are doing is in this lifestyle of faith, God speaks to you. You hear from God and you do as God directs you. And God causes success to happen to you in your life. And that's a lifestyle of faith. When you start looking at, uh, I, this is a, a neat deal, and I don't have time this morning to go into great de detail in it, but I'm just going to probably stop here with this particular part in just a moment. It's Matthew chapter 7. When you come to the end of Matthew 7, uh, Jesus says some things. And so I'm going to preface it by what he said before. If you look in Matthew 5, 6, 7, I think I'm right. It's chapter 5, 6, and 7. I know it's 6 and 7, but I think 5 is a part of it. Is you're going to find that this is what was called the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus sits down and he starts giving them all of these things. And what he does is he changes, he's changing their thinking from just being a Hebrew thinking to a kingdom of God thinking. Now the Hebrew thinking was okay because God developed that Hebrew, that is, that, that thinking from the Ten Commandments, etc. with Moses and all that went on with it, but what had happened, they had turned it into a religion, not a relationship, 
and it was no longer working. So what Jesus does is Jesus comes and he shows them a better way. It's along the same path. He's not, he's, he says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. But what happens in, in these, these verses before in the Sermon on the Mount, he starts giving them things that they had never heard before. And man, it was quite shocking to them. He said things like this. If a guy smacks you on one cheek, do what? Turn the other. He tells uh, the people that they are a light in the world. And no man hides it under a basket. He gives them the Beatitudes. Blessed, blessed, blessed are those who do these particular things. And all those things that he said seem to be almost... Uh, very different from anything that they had heard before. But what God was doing with this was developing a lifestyle. A kingdom lifestyle. A kingdom lifestyle. And, and let me say something. If you don't watch yourself, you develop your own kingdom lifestyle and it's going to take you down the wrong path. Teenagers, young adults, listen to me today. It isn't what you think that matters, it's what His Word says. Our lifestyle is not something I develop on my own, it's something I get from the book. From what he speaks to me. Is that okay? Anybody upset? Anybody's toes hurting? So after he's done all of this, he finds finally ends up with these words. Therefore, whoever hears, 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 hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. In other words, every person is going to face challenges. None of us are excluded from the challenges. But those who hears and does. So it's more than hearing. So what has to happen to change it from just hearing? Because all of us today are hearing the same thing. We're all hearing the same message. Why is it that some will go out of this room and will put it to practice in their life and will have success out of it? And why are there that others will come and listen to the message, the same message, the same thing that was said, and when they leave the room today, there will be no change whatsoever in their life it will not change their success rate one bit. Because it's hearing the Word of God, doing it in the middle of your adversity, for everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, the rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. Now, I'm going to close with this. Romans chapter 10. 
Romans chapter 10 helps tie this whole concept together, and I hope that it'll help you today. Romans chapter 10, Paul writes, and he says, For Christ is in the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteous of faith, righteousness of faith, speaks on this wise. Do not say in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. Where is it at? In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the scripture says, Whoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for it's the same Lord uh, over all is rich to all who call on him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Now, pull out your Bible. This part is not in there. I want you to find it now. Next verse, Michael. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Next verse. How shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. That scripture's weird. My feet aren't pretty. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, who has believed our report? So then, faith does what? Comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So, what is happening out of this? As you hear the message, it's got to be transferred from your body to your soul. And it's got to transfer from your soul to your spirit. And when it transfers through all these directions, it goes from natural to supernatural. Because you see, the lifestyle of faith is not natural. The lifestyle of faith is supernatural. So what does God do God puts you in circumstances that the natural can't get you out of to cause you to have to activate your supernatural faith to get through it. And you say, how do I do it? By hearing what God is saying and applying it to your life. You know what? I don't want a natural church. I don't want a natural church. 
I want a supernatural church. And you say, you want? No, let me change it. God doesn't want us to be a natural church. He wants us to be a supernatural church. Amen? You see, what the natural does, we try to work everything out on our own. And you know what we're good at doing? Making a mess of it all. But you see, when we get past the natural and say, my natural cannot take care of my circumstance at this moment. I've got to have the help of God. When God comes into the picture, God never comes into the, into the picture as natural. He's never going to come down to your level. He's going to take you to His. Now that's bigger than what some of you may understand at this moment. You see, what God has done through Jesus Christ, when Jesus came, that was the closest of God coming to man. But when Jesus went back to the Father, the next time He comes back, He's not coming back on a donkey. He's coming back on a white horse. He's coming back in power and might. He is coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. Are you with me? That day is past. So what is God in the process of doing? Is taking every one of us in this room out of your natural ability, out of your natural state, and turning you into a person who's living a lifestyle of faith and walking into the supernatural. And that's what God wants out of you today, is for that to happen. Now, I've said all of that, and this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a portion of you who will walk out of this room today and say, just another message. But there'll be a few. There'll be somebody. Maybe ones and twosies, I don't know. At least I hope there's onesies and twosies and maybe some threesies and foursies. Maybe some dozensies that will walk out of this room today and say, I want to hear from God and I want to become a person who has a lifestyle of faith. In reverse and come from there for a second. You see, sometimes in order for us to get to that point, God has to remove his hand and us let us face a challenge that's bigger than us. And all of a sudden, we say, how am I going to fix this? And you can't. And so God says, okay, you ready to put me into your life and let me be a part of the equation with you? Let me be a part of what it takes to get done what you need to get done in your life. In fact, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me right now that there's some individuals in this room that you're experiencing and facing some things right now. You've been trying to work it out by yourself and it's not working very well and you need a supernatural intervention from God today to help you get through what you're going through. And I believe God wants to help you. I know God wants to help you with it. But you've got to learn to hear His voice and do what he says for that to happen. Bow your heads with me for prayer. Heavenly Father, let your work be done in this place today. Touch individuals in this place, God. I ask God for you 
to cause a new faith to be generated inside of us today to believe you for things to happen that we can't get done on our own. I ask you, God, for miracles today in people's lives. God, let us believe you for the miraculous to take place in our lives. Let us hear from you and do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads bowed for a moment, eyes closed. If you're here, you're facing a challenge in your life that's bigger than you, and you need supernatural intervention in it, would you lift up your hand right now? Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. 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 I've got to have God's help. Hallelujah. That hand. Hands went up all over the room. You need God's help. Okay, now stand with me, please. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside. Praise your name. I had no intentions of doing this, but I'm not the one in control. He's the one in control. There was the lots of hands that were raised. My intentions has never been to try and expose people that are going through challenges. That's up to you if you want to share it with somebody, not me. I don't share your challenges with other people. But if that's you here today and you want, you sincerely want God's help and you really feel like, okay, if you don't feel this way, stay at your seat. If you and God are going to get it worked out and there's no no need of anybody else supporting you in prayer, stay at your seat. But if, if you, if you lifted your hand and you just say, I need somebody to pray with me. I need somebody to believe with me for God to help me to get a hearing ear to hear from God and follow His steps. I need that help. If that's you, we're going to sing this chorus again. Pastor Lane's going to help us with it. And you can just slip out from your seat and come here at the front. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to ask somebody to come and join you in supportive prayer. And they're going to pray with you through where you are in your challenge today till you get your miracle. So... If God sends you up here, don't just say a prayer and go back to your seat. Get a phone number. Do something so that you have contact with that person through text or whatever so you can stay in contact with them and believe God with them all the way through till they get their miracle. Amen? So, if you want to come, you don't have to. You don't have to doesn't mean that that you have displeased God by staying at your seat. But if you just need somebody to be here for you, then get down here at the front. Come on right now. 
Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Okay. Now let the Holy Spirit lead you to someone. If you wanted to come down here, you get on down here in a hurry. Get on down here. Don't let this be a stop for you. Get on down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, honey, for coming. Honey, be capable of my son or my guy. You're the living one. Yeah. The ever flowing fountain. Money, 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 God. Comforter and counselor. Take a belief control. Now then, I need God to lead you to somebody here at the front. Hurry. Don't stay at your seats. Come on. Come and help me. Come and help me. Hallelujah. 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 We still have people that need somebody with them. Hurry. Leave your seat. Come help me. Praise your name. Praise your name. Show the living water. You're Stretch your hands out toward these at the front. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Yes. Comforter. We 
for what you've done in this place. God, now give us orders. Speak to our hearts. Send us out of here, God, with your blessing upon us, God, with a word from you to know what your purpose, your plan is. God, we will become people living by faith, living by faith, living by a voice, a word from you, God, you, God, are going to speak to these lives today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Son, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. God is with you. You've wondered about why I have come to this area. Even though there was a need there was a part of you that has questioned, why am I here? But God is saying, I'm putting my hand on you, son. I'm going to turn you from being the person that you have saw as weak and not able to fulfill the major task that's in front of you. And I'm going to give you a word from me. You're going to walk in it. And I am going to show you what to say. You'll not wait on somebody else to say it. You, I will speak into your heart. And you will be a voice that will speak into the lives of those that you are praying for right now. Hallelujah. Yes, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. We hope you enjoyed this message from Victory Church. For more information about Victory Church, 
or to browse our media library, find us online at www.victorychurchnwa.com. Thanks be to God who always leads us in victory.